way no one will get confused on whether we're twins or yeah or not. We look a lot alike, and do we? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so, so today we are talking about my closet cleanout. Yay! I, I was went very through, proud of you. I went through all of my clothes. The only thing I didn't do was scarves and headbands which I didn't even know if that was supposed to count or not. I wasn't really following anyone's rules specifically. And I know in like a Marie Kondo chart that I found, it mentioned jewelry, which I haven't done yet. That felt like a different issue for me. I was uh. kind of trying to stick to just like cloth, but Grab not it, yeah. headbands and stuff. And it took Headbands several... are hair, that's right. so I think you're fine. Yeah. It took several days because of my children. Well, yeah. If I had not had distractions, I think it only would have taken like an hour or two honestly yeah it was like the actual process it's not as fast. bad as you think I think people dread it procrastinate it and think it's gonna be really awful I think a lot of people have already decided in their heads about a lot of things they're gonna get rid of they yeah. just haven't taken those steps it's true I had never done it all at once and that was really eye-opening and it was it was like a relief it was comforting mm -hmm. because it got it all in one place mm -hmm. and there was nothing hiding like I did have to have to go through some laundry and I mentioned in the video, right. I had to go get some wet laundry out of the dryer to count because I wanted a number and I didn't want to stop. So I counted some wet laundry and put it back in the laundry and awesome. started the dryer. I'm glad that you were so thorough. Uh, the only thing I didn't count, I mentioned, was my wedding dress in a bag. <laughs> and no, um, I watched videos of people who have like five or seven shirts. Mm -hmm. I watched, I just watched a video of someone who had like 1500 pieces of clothing so i didn't know how to feel because i know that there are some like middle of the road especially especially like capsule wardrobe type people who uh -huh. have like they'll say they want to have like 40 shirts or like 40 pieces of clothing there yeah. what is it what are they called? it's like the, the little <laughs> closet you know like the rolling closet yeah, like that award it's not a wardrobe no whatever uh -huh. anyway right i didn't really know how many clothes is right for me. Going through it, I knew that I had too much, so I felt like, it's not like I felt ashamed, it was just like, this is too much, you guys. But I also didn't know, like, should I feel proud of myself for only having this much, or should I feel ashamed of myself for having this much? Because there are so many ends of the spectrum, um, but I do not use so many of them, and I am a very minimal person as far as clothes that I wear mm -hmm, and I, I hardly I'm wearing makeup now because I want you guys to see a better part of me <laughs> me too sometimes because the other videos I didn't wear any makeup and I would you know getting like two hours of sleep so I want to have some video where I don't look like a huge mess so I knew that it was too much but I still don't really know what the right amount is and you can't really go by people's rules of thumb because no. everyone is different and different phases of life so like I have Absolutely. to have nursing clothes right now I had to have maternity clothes. There were maternity clothes that I'm not ready to gr get rid of because they were expensive, mm. they fit me perfectly, and I don't know yet if I'm gonna have more children or not. Mm -hmm. And I've had three, and every time I've been glad that I kept those pieces. Yeah. So I didn't keep a ton of them, but I kept just the nice stuff that fit me really well. A lot of times people who do do the capsule wardrobes or the, the minimal wardrobes, they will pull those pieces from their bigger wardrobe, put everything else away, as long as you're your wardrobe is functional and serving a purpose. Even when I was sorting through and putting stuff in bags, like garbage bags to go to the thrift store um, to donate, I think I pulled like three more shirts from my keep pile and tried them on, like stuff that I thought I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I don't. And that's something, <laughs> I don't want. that's something that I have found as I've gone through because when I first started minimalizing, you know, I went through everything and then I ended up going through again. And it was like, I knew there were certain things that I knew I was going to eventually let go of, but I just wasn't ready yet. So I would encourage you and anyone who is doing this to just kind of go for it and just be brutal. Like just make that decision and be bold and let go of the stuff. Don't in the back of your mind be like, I want to let go of this, but I'm not quite ready. I'll be ready next round because then you're going through everything multiple times. Right. And I, I did end up doing that because I just wasn't bold enough the first time around. Yeah, I am someone who is sentimental about certain clothing mm -hmm. items. Like I'm not going to get rid of my wedding dress. It was very inexpensive. I could not resell it for any right. anything. I bought it. But for it was perfect and beautiful. It was $45 at Goodwill. So awesome. 
my dad used a senior citizen discount to help me buy it. I didn't clean it before I wore it. I didn't clean it after I wore it. Um, and it's sitting in a actual bag, like not a clothing bag or a garment bag. It's in a bag. <laughs> like a, yeah. I mean, I had it in the like Goodwill bag or something. up until getting married and I just pulled it out <laughs> and went and got married. There's That's no awesome. reason for me to get rid of that. It's sentimental. My daughters might want it someday. I had, um, I think I showed it, a shirt that my husband wrote on, like found for me when he worked at Goodwill and he wrote all over it. And this was before we were even, even dating. And I'd held on to it for years, and honestly, it's fine to just take a picture. The picture was fine. I did not need to save it all this time. I still have the dress that I wore when I got engaged. Some things you can take a picture of, but a couple things I was still too sentimental to get rid of, and I felt fine about it. I was, like, I put the dress that was too small that I got engaged in, I put it in the box with my winter clothes, and my maternity stuff that I wasn't ready I had two under the bed boxes and now I only have one. I have an empty one. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet or if I need it. Um, so I was surprised about how many sentimental items I ended up getting rid of. I don't want to wear the things that I wore as a teenager anymore. Well, it's okay. And it was such a relief. It's okay before, to make updates on your wardrobe or right. your style. I and mean, we have money yeah. now to buy nicer pants. Like, I'm not, <laughs> you know, like... Back then it was like, I can't afford to get rid of these bags. Yeah, and they still worked. So. After I had my youngest child, I lost a lot of weight. And the reason I lost it was mostly because I was cutting out all those things out of my diet. Because I was breastfeeding and he could not tolerate dairy or soy or a bunch of other things. So at that point, I got down to like my lowest weight. I mean, I was almost as light as I was at my wedding. So I was like excited. And I thought, well, now that I've gotten down to that weight, I could maybe maintain that weight. This is 30 pounds ago. <laughs> the answer is no, I can't. Um, it's only 15 pounds ago because I've lost some weight. So anyway, but regardless. Don't say never. So I bought a lot of nice pants. Not your daughter's jeans. That's my favorite mm -hmm. brand. Those high-waisted pants. They fit so well. Different colors. And for years since then, I've hung on to those pants thinking I might lose weight again and I might be this size again. And then I will love these pants. But I pulled them out the other day and I'm like, you know, they're not that great. They're not that special. You can still find that brand, even though they're higher in brand, you can find them discounted. And just, I just need to keep the clothes that fit me now. Right. Someone else can wear right. these rather than leaving them in my attic where they're going to, you know, deteriorate. They're going right. to lose style lose value. and they're just being completely useless. Plus the things that are packed away that are unused are still mentally a load on your um on your mind like right. you know that those things are hanging around and they are weighing you down oh this is ways. a great point my sister-in-law lived with us for about two months and she had just moved out of the guest room so i made the bed like everything was clean i dusted everything was clean in the guest room our baby is still sleeping with us so i did everything in the guest room so i wouldn't have to be like tiptoeing around our bedroom the next day after i got all the clothes out there was a complete like a layer of dust on everything from my clothes wow. which was terrifying and my husband even came in and he was like it smells like you smelled in college and I was like <gasps> so and he thought it was a nice like sentimental oh, smell like, but all oh, I could think the about old Caroline. You know, like the old hair products I used to uh, wear the old like perfume I used to wear all these things right, and that you kind he of thought it was like a sweet thing to say and I was like that's Whoa. terrifying <laughs> that there's dust and like smells from yeah. these clothes that are literally 15 to 20 years old, like 10, 15, then, 20 years old. And when your closet is stuffed, as mine has frequently been in the past. They can't breathe. They can't breathe. They don't get that aeration. Mm -hmm. They don't get the flow of the air. And so they do but get like that stale smell. Mm -hmm. Even if you're using, I mean, even if you're pulling clothes out of your closet every day, if they are tightly packed in, and it's just not in the dark where the sun's right, not right. Like, and our, your closet usually doesn't have ventilation. Like, yeah, it doesn't have a vent, so it's it's just not. Yeah, I was, and that was something that made it easier for me to let go. Like I I remember this about some of my childhood stuffed animals when I was trying to get rid of those, just knowing, and I felt bad about it, and I didn't want to get rid of them, but I told myself I realized these are never going to be rid of dust ever. Yeah. And that was enough. I was like, this is a health decision, not mm -hmm. just for me, but for my family. And I was just able to let them go. And that's what I said about the clothes. Like, this is just disgusting. Um, if I have like a reasonable amount, I can wash all of them and keep them from being disgusting. And some things that's I was true. like, eh, do I want to keep this? Do I not? So I looked at the label, what's the material? Mm -hmm. And it was like, 
I knew it. It's not, rayon. Not, should, not it natural doesn't fabric. Feel good. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. So my standards are higher, like yeah. when they used to be, yeah. and they're getting high. Like so, when I have way fewer clothes, my standards for like I'm just not gonna buy a shirt that's gonna have spandex and rayon. Yeah. Because why would I have that in my wardrobe if I'm only keeping things to a certain number? Yeah. And when you look, when you change your standard of how many things you need, when you really zero in on the fact that you don't you know most of us only really wear a small fraction of our wardrobe on a regular basis well if you give yourself the freedom to let go of those other items then you can invest in nicer clothes or right. be more picky when you're shopping because mm -hmm. you don't have this idea that you have to have 10 different coats mm -hmm. which many women do you know they'll have yeah. like multiple coats for and you know all of these purses and all of these shoes for in all these different colors and if you, and you're much better about that, like, you know, you have your shoes and you just wear them with everything. It's so much more simple. Something else that, that I thought was interesting for the process was I would find something that I used to love. Like I had this skirt that I loved that was khaki and it was just so comfortable and I put it on and it felt so good still. And my mom always complimented me when I wore it. Like it was just one of those pieces of clothing that I really liked mm -hmm. and um, it, it was a skirt. It did not look like one, but it was so comfortable. Right. Um, I went downstairs to my husband and I was like, you know what? I need a second opinion because I've, I've worn this and I loved it. You're waffling on this decision. It's a terrible color for me. Yeah. And I never, it's not that I didn't know. I didn't know that for years. I mean, I wore the skirt for years. It's just, I didn't think about it because well, back then it was just like, right. it fits me well. It's comfortable. Yeah. I felt like I could only have one or two, but not all three. I couldn't have something that fit me well, <laughs> was comfortable, and looked good on me. And part of I that is I because of I our, pick one or two. our bargain hunting. Right. We have, because we shop with very low financial standard, like we're trying it's to get these like really good deals. You so find you, something and are like, that's the does perfect. it come in a different color? It right. Doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so you end up lowering your standards sometimes. Right. And that's something that it's, I think as we've gotten older, it's, something to adjust your standards and to really recognize what works and what doesn't and to realize like you said that you're the phase of life you're in the size you are the shape you are the, even the things that Roll you like it. yeah they change which is why hanging on to things that you think might come around again is it's really not unhealthy it's not healthy it's not practical and just and the one of the biggest things that like was like a kind of a light bulb moment and I'm sure I read it from Joshua Becker because he's one of my he's absolutely my favorite minimalist author Joshua Becker is, um, is just the fact that if you have things that you are just storing, you are paying your, like, think about how much you're paying on your mortgage for your house by the square foot. Mm -hmm. So that's how much you're paying every month for your home, for living space. Right. But if you were treating it as storage space, you could be storing your stuff in a storage unit for so much cheaper. So we are cutting our family short giving them less living space when we are just piling up our stuff. Yeah. I mean, it is like really a dramatic thing to consider when yeah. you're just laying everything, like letting that stuff just sit there. Like footprints mm -hmm. are taken up from your living space. It's taken away from my, my living space. Right. I realized that I don't, I'm 28. I don't really know what looks good on me. <laughs> I pretty much know what colors look good on me. As far as styles and fit, I mean, we haven't even had a full length mirror in our house in probably, <laughs> I don't think I've had a full length mirror in about four years. So it's not like I even look at well, myself before I leave the house. And I don't know what cuts look good on me. I don't know what styles You've been pregnant three times right. and nursing and it's just a constant evolution. So I think it would have been kind of futile to try to really like suss some of that some out, right. out during those phases. But now, but it was nice asking Alex, my husband, I was like, is this a bad color for me? Because I feel like it is, but I need some confirmation. Mm -hmm. And he like looked me up and down several times and was like, it's not a good, he it's was like, <laughs> he said it's a good color for your arms, but not your legs. And I was like, this doesn't, I can't tell if this looks good on me. I feel like it almost might, does it? <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> and it's like, I haven't, I don't have time to shop. Because I feel I, like, what's the point when I have so many clothes? Right. Now I feel like I have the freedom to go and, like, eventually try on stuff and be like, does this actually look great on me? Because and, I've always just had lower standards. And now you can 
see what your actual wardrobe gaps are. Right. Because it wasn't obvious when you had things that were, you know, right. too small or whatever, or you just were old and you knew you weren't going to wear it. If you continue to buy something, even if it's like a must have or a capsule wardrobe, like another one for me, I think I talked about this. I don't think other. anything is a must have. Like a button up shirt. Like everyone is always like, you got to have a white button up shirt. They don't flatter me. They don't look good. The color and the cut are bad for me. So every time I bought one, I, I got regret it. Kids. So I, just I have not it. been able to keep white, white things are shirt. crazy. No, don't do it. <laughs> I can't have a white shirt. The second I buy it, it's no longer white. And 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 who wants to deal with laundry? You know, high maintenance laundry. That's another thing. We I don't buy I things will that not are iron things. We don't buy things that have to no. be hand washed no. or ironed. Who has the time? I sometimes Lots plug of people, in. but not us. <laughs> not us. When it comes to choosing what clothes you're going to keep or what you're not, um, I do have a full length mirror, and I was looking it, but I found when I take photos, like full length photos, just selfies with the you know my phone and then go back and look at all my outfits side by side. Mm -hmm. Even you can make a like a little collage of all your outfits. I did that for my summer wardrobe last summer and it was so eye-opening to look at how I look side by side. So, oh wow, look at that. That is flattering. That is not. And it that really, gives me a shape. it's this easier. Me a shape. Yeah, yeah, it is so don't. much easier when you look at photos than to me when I look right in the mirror. Yeah. I guess I'm just, I don't know, I can't make the call. But when I look at photos of myself, especially when I lay them all out, man, easy thinking oh, about a doing show. a video at some point of what I decided to keep that's fun might be embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> this is my Who favorite cares? can you believe it yeah <laughs> it's a process and learning this is obviously a process for all of us and I think that's why looking at the photos later is very you know it helps you be more brutal yes when it comes to saying no at the store or when it comes to saying goodbye <laughs> from the closet like, we need to make better decisions as far as clothes ticking all our boxes yes and that's something when I started doing stitch fix which is totally new I've only done three stitch fixes but when I realized the things I was telling my stylist because I was trying to be very very specific about the things I will and will not wear mm -hmm. I was like when if, if I made that because like I'll go and try on jeans that are not ticking those boxes because I'm like well this might still be cute or yeah. fun and I might try it but if I stick with my parameters like always high-waisted mm -hmm. always skinny and you know that they're gonna be great because she's she's doing all those things. Why can't I do those things when I'm shopping? Right. Well, I can. Yes, you and can. I will. <laughs> so I want to get there with all of my clothes. Like right. I don't want to buy polyester ever. Yeah. I don't want to buy plastic clothing. I don't want to buy microfiber. I just want to buy like linen, cotton, breathable, healthy things. And that's that's it for me. Is that if I make it into a health decision, it's easier. Like, get rid of the stuffed animals because they have dust in them. Yeah. Get rid of whatever, like, don't wear footwear that's going to make throw my body out of alignment. It's easy for me. So if I can get to a point with clothes where I just have a list of what mm -hmm. is a deal breaker, mm -hmm. I think that I'll be golden for shopping. I think I still probably have too many shirts, but I'm going to give it some time. So, like, right before this happened, I kind of, like, had a mindset switch about a lot of things. So I often put myself on spending freezes just because like I don't want to buy stuff on Amazon anymore. I don't want to. Mm. And a lot of the time it's for financial stuff. Like I'm just all of a sudden like, hey, let's motivated. Let's save a bunch of extra money this month towards the mortgage or towards mm -hmm. whatever. So I had just put myself on a spending freeze. And right after that, I was like, Alex, I'm trying to clean. I have all this art stuff. I really need to get a cart from Ikea to put the art stuff in. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it on the counters. I'm going to leave all the kids' art stuff just spread out, and I'm just going to make do with something I have in the house for now. Mm -hmm. Because if I buy something, I know that it might be something that I don't need right now. Like, I, I'm going to give it some time, and it's the same thing with my wardrobe. I'm just going to let myself breathe with what I have for right now and see, you know, get through the summer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see what I wear, what I don't wear, and I think it's going to be a lot easier. So I'm not going to go out and shop for any clothes, even though I've given myself some gaps by getting rid of a bunch of old crappy stuff. Mm -hmm. I've put some gaps in my wardrobe, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to fill them until I have lived some life with what I have now, because I, I just don't know, I don't know what my needs are. And when you buy the right thing that really fills a need, you're going to really enjoy it. You're going to take yeah. care of it. You're going to have the energy to take care of it. Yes. So when you were going through your clothes, did you try on a bunch? Or were you mostly just kind of just making those decisions based on? I tried on some Because that takes a lot longer, but sometimes it's not necessary. Sometimes I we know that this, I have had so many of I know clothes this for so work. long. Yeah. And honestly, my standards have rate, like gone up to the point where a lot of things, I just held them and I 
it's not the spark joy thing. It's like <laughs> I held them and they felt fake. Yeah. Like they had that the texture. fake uh, feeling. Some yeah. of them smelled like that fake fabric smell. Yeah. And some of them I was just like, I'm done. I don't right. want this, this just anymore. Not, I don't need to anymore. try this on. Mm -hmm. It's not going to feel good to try it on. Mm -hmm. And I was saying before, like there was a lot of stuff that as I was sorting, like shirts, pants, I would hold it and be like, uh, I already want to put this in the giveaway pile. Like, yeah. I don't even want to count the items. Don't wanna, fight it. But I didn't do it because I wanted to count everything. I wanted to know how much I had. So I'm definitely going to eventually get to the one in, one out rule. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'm just not ready to add anything. If I do, then I will definitely be getting rid of something. And it'll be easy because mm -hmm. I already have things that I'm ready to get rid of. But I would like to get some more wear out of them because it's August 1st. Yeah. Um, I can get through the summer and use them. So that was it. That was my closet clean out. Um, I feel really good about it and I'm anxious to get back home honestly and continue. I have a bunch of piles all around the house right now. So like, what's, your away, next, away, away. what's your next uh, project? Like, I, might do, I might do jewelry because I know mm -hmm. that that's going to be pretty easy yeah. to do. I do kind of like the Marie Kondo like order of things. We did go through books and I think I'm going to go through like do some videos of books that we are getting rid of because um, I can at least show what we went through. Like and subscribe. <laughs> As they say. As the youngins would have it. So we are Leah and Caroline, and we are the minimalist sisters who are doing the, the stuff. I don't think we've named our channel yet, but by the time you see this, we'll have a name. So subscribe <laughs> to our unnamed channel. <laughs>